take C.S. Lewis or Tolkien as an example, as examples here, both of them were great artists uh, as well as great scholars. They, both of them were the best scholar in their particular field for a period of 50, maybe 100 years. Uh, both of them were also great writers, great artists in, in that sense. But neither of them thought of themselves as a genius or, or somebody special who ought to be worshipped or admired by other people because they were good at their art. You know, they saw that as a particular calling before God, which they were prepared to exercise faithfully and well, rather than something which set them apart from other people. And one of the lovely things about both of those men is they had the deepest respect for and good relationships with their gardener, their mailman, you know, the person who, who drove the bus, the person who collected the tickets on the bus, those kinds of ordinary people in their lives, their, their butcher, their baker, and their candlestick maker. And they didn't think of themselves as any better than those people who are not artists or who are not scholars either. Um, they just saw themselves as ordinary men gifted by God, both to be scholars and to be artists. And it, it seems to me that's a, a more biblical approach. And that's what you see in Europe you know, up through the time of the Reformation and beyond where to be an artist was just another job, like being a furniture maker you know, or, or uh, a, an architect, you know, to be a painter, to be a writer, to be an actor, to be a musician was, was, was a job somebody had, which they were called to do well. And if they were Christian, to do it well to the glory of God and for the blessing of other people. And that's for, 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 for our own children, for young people in our churches who have been gifted in the area of the arts, that's what we're called to teach them. Yeah, this is a, this is a gift of God, but it's no more special than, than being a computer engineer or these are particular callings. And so let's, let's use them to the glory of God and for the blessing of other people. But don't let's put the artist on a pedestal and say, here is a prophet. You know, here is, here is a genius, here is a god who we, we are to worship because they have this special artistic sensitivity as if that somehow made them a better human being. Uh, and there are many examples of, of Christians who were great artists who did not have this exalted view of themselves. You can think of Jane Austen. I think she's the greatest novelist in the English language. A wonderful, wonderful writer. I read all six of her novels every year, at least once. You know, I just love to read them all over again, and I watch every movie that comes out uh, of them with my wife, and we just enjoy them greatly, and I love to teach about her. But, but she just was an ordinary person, and she thought of herself as an ordinary person. She didn't think of herself as, as some genius who, uh, who people should admire. In fact, she didn't even want anybody to know her name. It was just revealed by a relative. You know, she she uh, published under, an, under another name. She had no interest in being famous. She was glad for the money, of course, because she was a very practical person, but, uh, but she had no interest in being known uh, as a great author.